Hello friends, Khalil here and welcome back to the channel. Today guys, we're going to be checking out on my OG, on me OG, the card game. I know I'm probably butchering the name. Someone's probably gonna let me know down below in the comments. Anyway, I always get it wrong. Anyways, whatever. So this is a new card game by NetEase Games. And one of the reasons why I'm actually excited to play this game is one of my favorite, like all time mobile card games was Marvel Duels. I, I just really liked the overall gameplay style that that game was going for. So I was pretty excited for this game to officially come out. Now, even though it's officially available, it's actually only uh, it's only launched in Singapore, Thailand, the Philippines, and Australia. So those are the only current areas uh, that have the game right now. So we got to decide which of our Shikigami we want to go ahead and level up. Let's go ahead and level up Uka. I don't know if I'm saying her name right. Now, one of the interesting mechanics of this game is you can pick a total of four Shikigami to have in your deck. And then every card that you draw is attached to a specific Shikigami, meaning like Hongan, who's on the far right, I haven't leveled him up yet, meaning I can't use any of his cards. Same with Momo. So I've only got Inugami and Huoka. So let's go ahead. We're going to take this card, activate it, and you get two actions per turn. Okay. So we've used up our actions. We're going to go ahead and end our turn right there. And now it's the enemy's turn. So the way that this game works is each Shikigami can be leveled up to a maximum of like three levels. There's kind of like this like swirling icon, but there's no like mana source in this game. The only restrictions that you have is based off of what level your Shikigami are. So now that Momo's leveled up to level one, I can now use a level one spell or level one ability that is attached to Momo. So what we want to do next is um, recover all health of the Inugami. Let's see, deal one damage to all opponents. Let's go ahead and drop that one down. The damage to all of them, which honestly, I probably should have saved that until his other Shikigami actually leveled up. But let's drop him in for an attack. Oh, he's got an, an ability he's activating. Shield of the Sea. So, didn't really do as much damage as I wanted. We'll go ahead and end our turn. So, now it's the enemy's turn. He's going to go ahead and pick a Shikigami that he wants to level up. And then we'll go from there. So, one of my favorite aspects of this game, though, is I think this is a really, really beautiful game. They've got some, like, really incredible art, specifically when it comes to these forms, because you can see right there that it's animated. When you use this, it sort of, like, evolves your Shikigami into a new form, making them more powerful and then changing their art to the art from the form card. So it looks really cool. I'm, I'm hopefully be able to show you guys kind of what that looks like. So the last card that we have is Hongan to level up. Now you can't level up any of your cards to level two or level three until all of your cards have hit level one or level two. So, um, what do we want to do here? We're kind of restricted because the only card that we can really do is that one. We could, we could do a basic attack if we wanted to. Um, let's just go ahead and attack with that. And then I'm going to go and just recover a health on that right there. Now she has uh, an ability where when Momo heals or revives one of your Shikigami, it gives plus one extra attack. So, I mean, I could have done, I think I could have done that before and then had him attack, but I'm not 100% sure on that. So anyway, so now he's going through and he's now leveling up his Shikigami to level two. So he's going to have more powerful abilities. But if you end up going, I think if you go second, you actually get five energy shield to protect yourself. So we're going to go ahead and level up Huuka right here. And we can now go and uh, use a form card to make her more powerful. So all of Huka's non-attacks get plus one damage. So go ahead and use that. And then this one's basically, like if I use it again, it's not its not going to really do anything. Okay, so I mean, I wasted both my actions, but I, I wanted to show you that if you use a form card like that twice, it's not going to not going to work for your characters. Okay, it's not going to like boost them up again. But you'll notice now that the art for the characters changed. Some of like the animation is now coming out of the border. I dig it. I think it looks really, really good. So, and I'll show you guys some uh, some more cards as we get into it. Maybe talk a little bit about like card building and deck building, and also we'll do we'll do some card pack openings. So, if we hopefully win this game, we're kind of uh, we're kind of losing right now. So, when a Shikigami loses all of their life, um, they go on cooldown for a couple of turns, but they'll eventually resurrect themselves. There's a couple of cards that can resurrect as well. Um, so they're not completely out of the match, but you can't use their cards when they're dead. So abundance when entering the battlefield and at the start of your turn, recover three health for a random wounded Shikigami of yours. So we're going to do this. We're going to upgrade her. And then we are going to, oh, I'm not going to waste that just yet. Let's go and attack that. Get rid of his shield. 
Yeah. I Honestly, we're kind of stuck right now because we have some really strong cards in our hands, but our Shikigami aren't leveled up enough. We need we need to get to the third round. We might be able to start making a comeback in the third round, but uh, we're kind of struggling right now. This guy is doing some serious damage to us. So we just lost one of our Shikigami. He goes on a three-turn cooldown, and he's recovering health. Okay. Let's do this one. Now, when Inugami levels up, he has a passive ability that when he levels up, you add a card to your hand, and the card basically just empowers him, make him stronger. Um, I just want to make sure... I want to be able to attack this guy and deal some serious damage. We'll do that. Now, I might lose Inugami the next turn because he will probably attack with any of his other cards and deal enough damage to knock him out. But what I'm planning on doing is I think I'm going to use Momo's Breeze to revive him, give him haste, and allow him to attack twice, basically. Or to allow him to attack without using any, uh, using any of my action cards. So he just formed... Oh my gosh, look at that. The Spectro Umi Bozu. Such a cool looking like, gosh, I love the freaking card art in this game. Okay, so now we can choose one of these guys to actually level up to the third level. I'm going to go with... Um, let's go with Hongon because Hongon has this ability to defeat a Shikigami. We're going to take him out. Okay. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to use this on Inugami. He's going to resurrect... And now he's got haste, which means I can now attack without using any of my resources. And now we've got ourselves in the freaking lead. Oh my gosh, finally. And now, one of the things I love about Hongon, okay? He has some really, really good abilities. So when you defeat, uh, when he defeats a Shikigami, deal one damage to the opponent player and you recover one health. It's super powerful, really, really great. But then he's also got this card where when you use it, it's his form card that like, you know, levels him up. It says, uh, this card gains one attack for each Shikigami you defeat during this game. So we've only defeated one. So we need to try and take down a couple more of these. Um, let's do, let's see. Inugami's combat card gains each time you use a body and mind. Two cards have been played. So we'll use the form card. I really, really don't want to waste... We'll just do that for now. Oh, shoot. He's got a trap card from Yu-Gi-Oh. But you know what? Do we do enough damage? Yes, we took him out. Now, we've killed two Shikigami. Uh, we're going to go end our turn. Now, I have the, uh, the Phoenix Flame. I'm going to use the Phoenix Flame next to take out his Yuki Ona. And then we've defeated three this turn. And, like, we're going to try to power up Hongon here use his condemned card make him crazy powerful and just like freaking start wrecking stuff okay so inugami's getting really really strong let's level up uka to third level we're gonna use this to knock that one out yeah we're doing like super super good okay let's see recover health um let's see evolved when you defeat one shikigami deal one damage to the opponent player Let's just... Oh, shoot. My Inugami's actually stunned. Um... We're gonna use this card. Now we've got Hangam up to 10 attack power. So we've got two, like, crazy powerful cards on our side that we can start just, like, destroying the enemy team. Because he doesn't really have a lot of cards on his, on his side that are really strong offensively, but he's got a lot of pretty good defensive characters, so... Momo's leveling up our Inugami. So, just for the fact that Momo is healing Inugami every single turn, constantly makes him more and more powerful. So, um, let's do that. Heal him again. Power him up to 11 11. Attack their card. Take him out. And then we'll go ahead and end our turn. So, I think what I'm going to do next is because he's going to get at least one resurrected card here. I'm not going to use... I might not use any of the cards I have in my hand. I think I'm going to try and to attack. Okay, never mind. So, this guy's basically screwed. Yeah, we're going to be doing a crazy amount of damage here in just a second. 
Uh, deal two damage to the opponent. This is a fast card, meaning it doesn't use any of your energy. Till uh, two, three damage. Um, I want to make sure that he's powered up as much as he is. 13. Oh, man. Look at that card art. It just looks so good. And we'll attack. 13 damage. All right. We'll end our turn. We've basically... We've, we've got this in the bag, okay? Because... He is going to have to throw down one of his Shikigami on the field, who's instantly going to die from ours, leaving his side of the field completely open, meaning that we can finally, we can take the win right here. There we go. So there's our win, our victory for our match. Yeah, so I, like I'm digging the mechanics in this game. It's unique. It, it definitely makes it stand out compared to any other kind of card game I played, but it's easy to understand. And I really dig like, the um, the deck building mechanics because when it comes to the deck building, it does remind me a little bit of Marvel Duel and I really appreciated the way that Marvel Duel was built. But basically, as you're going through and you collect new cards and stuff, you'll be able to unlock Shikigami. As you unlock Shikigami, you'll be able to pick four of them down here and then you can drop eight cards from that Shikigami's like setup of cards. So for example here, Unugami, I actually have this new card right here. Revive Unugami only can be played uh, when Unugami is defeated. If I want to, I could drop that down and get rid of one of these cards that I have down here. Now you have to remember too, to keep an eye out for like the different resources and how many, like what level your cards is or like how, what level your cards need to be in order to activate them. So you want to make sure that your resources in that way are kind of kept balanced, but it's a pretty easy setup on how to build your decks, but I think it's really cool to see like how different combinations can work. Like Inugami constantly being healed by Momo, constantly made him stronger, made it so he was just a powerhouse to start doing damage. Now, there's a lot of stuff to do in this game. You've got missions, you've got the main storyline you can play through. There's these kind of like little stories at the beginning that you can play through that kind of slowly teach you the game. You've also got like little training guide missions that you can play as well. There's a lot of content in the game already and I'm actually kind of impressed by that. But we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna end the video by doing, uh, we're gonna open up some packs and see if we can't get some SSR rarity cards and show you guys some of like the card art because yeah, the card art in this looks freaking good. So let's draw our little symbol. So we got Yoko Ana. And then we can go through, open up all of our cards. So we only got rare cards there. Unseal another one. And we've got, ooh, we have one that looks like it's rare. And it is an SR Demon's Hand. This is a combat card for Ibaraki Doji. Uh, move an opponent's Shikigami to the combat zone if there is no Shikigami in the opponent's combat zone. So go ahead and unlock another one. Now. Once you've summoned cards for a Shikigami, I believe it basically becomes unlocked at that point, but it doesn't mean that you can use that Shikigami in a deck because you, you need to get at least a minimum of eight cards from that Shikigami in order to put them in a deck. So even though you technically unlock them, you can't use them just yet until you get enough of their cards. So, And there's a lot of Shikigami cards in this game so far. We got ourselves an, holy crap, an SSR. Which, I played the beta for this game, and I never got an SSR. This is Swaying Blaze, a spell card for Huaka, which is actually in my main deck right now. That's great. So not bad, not bad. We got a new form card. You can see the little animations going on. And then our final one. Hopefully we get one more, at least an SR card. Doesn't look like we're going to. And there we go. We did get a form card. The form cards are my personal favorite because they are animated and they look freaking sweet. So there we go. So we, uh, Shikigami activated. We get a couple of her extra cards. Like if you unlock them, you get a couple of their extra cards. So we've just, we've unlocked a lot of Shikigami. And if we have enough cards for them, uh, we might be able to add some of them into our deck and stuff. But before we go ahead and like end the video, I do want to go and show you guys the Shikigami themselves because there's a lot in the game. There's a lot of different styles of gameplay and decks that you can build, like a crazy amount. Remember, you can combine four of any of the Shikigami to create a deck. So it's kind of wild how many Shikigami there are in this game and the amount of combinations of decks that you can make. It's I don't know how the meta is going to turn out because it's going to be freaking crazy. 
But if you click on it, you can go and you can take a look at what cards that you have available from that Shikigami. And then if you want, you can go to the gallery and you can see all the cards that that specific Shikigami has available. And then you can go and you can take a look at the card itself, watch the animations. And then if you flip your iPad or your phone sideways, you can see it like in full art. I'm not going to do it right now, but there you guys go. Yeah, I'm, I'm digging this game. I think it's a pretty good card game. My only concern with this game is Marvel Duels still isn't out in the West, okay? They've released it to a couple of new places, so I don't know how long it's going to take for On My OG, On Me OG, the card game, to finally come out to the West. It may take a long time, so cross your fingers it comes out sooner because I think it's a good game. Is it going to be crazy popular? I don't know, but I do like the mechanics. I like how it's... It's pretty different than a lot of other card games out there. So guys, thanks so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like on it. If you guys want to see maybe another video or gameplay of OmniOG Arena or <laughs> OmniOG the card game, not Arena, let me know down below in the comments. So guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.